Back in the mid-1800s, rich men were buying acres of land in downtown Portland. Names you would recognize today like Pettigrove, Lovejoy, Stark, Lounsdale, and Chapman. Well, Daniel Lounsdale and William Chapman, uh, both very influential, powerful people here in the early days of Portland. Daniel Lounsdale was a politician, businessman, and real estate investor. William Chapman was co-founder of The Oregonian. He was also Lounsdale's attorney and real estate partner. And if you take a look at this early Portland map, you can see both Chapman's and Lounsdale's properties. In 1870, Chapman sold blocks 53 and 54 to the city for over $6,000. The two blocks would later be named Lounsdale and Chapman Squares. The original intent was for public parks, for, for beauty, for relaxation, uh, and then, uh, then a scandal happened. The beautiful parks became a problem. Men, men were hanging around these park, parks and they would uh, talk to, whistle at, yell at young ladies or ladies going through the park. This got the mayor and council to make a change, a regulation that banned men from talking to women 14 years of age and over. That's right. It would be illegal for men to flirt with women while they were in the city park. I've got a great story here from the Oregonian from 1894. And it says, uh, the crowd of idle loafers who for weeks past have taken possession of the plaza blocks, lounging about and sleeping on the grass will be compelled to move on. And it was still a problem 10 years later. Note this Oregon Journal article in 1904, where an even bigger change was made. Headline reading, South Plaza Block Barred to Loafers. Park Board divides the plaza between loungers and women. Idle men must be off reserve track. Folks who were just had, no, had nothing to do and would go and loll, as they said, in, in the park. The city made Chapman Square only for women and children, unless a man was escorting them. Just feet away, Lounsdale was for men only. The park's division put rules in place, and if you didn't obey, you were fined and were put in jail for unwanted flirting. It was called mashing, was the, was the name they used back then. Check out this 1912 article talking about how a man that was fined $20 wanted a refund from the city, an issue discussed between a city councilman and clerk. What was he charged with? Asked Councilman Daly. Mashing, replied the clerk. What? Said the councilman. Mashing, said the clerk again. I don't get you, said Daly. Mashing, otherwise flirting. The councilman finally understanding and saying, oh yes, then let him pay his fine. Nothing doing with me on refunding money to people who flirt. In 1924, the city council passed an ordinance. The fine this time was $50. This rule would stand for decades, although be less and less enforced as the years went by. Signs like this would remain on the entrance to the park even into the 1970s, and the ordinance would finally get repealed in 1990. All right, so what uh, what Eric's showing what Eric's showing you right now is a brick building. That's a bathroom. Woo! -hoo! You're like, yay! I get to see a bathroom in the morning show. There's a bathroom here in Lounsdale. There's a bathroom over there in Chapman. For the longest time, that was the men's. That was the women's. When I moved here, I had no idea why there was a bathroom on opposite ends of each park. So I started doing a little research on these two parks, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. I get it now. This one was for men. That was for women.